Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to be talking about the effects of lightning on commercial aircraft and how they are protected against it. So what is lightning? It's really the discharge of a high amount of electrical energy and it can be up to a million volts and hundreds of thousands of amps. So aircraft are struck on average once a year, which is about every 1000 flight hours. And most of the strikes occur during the climb or descent phase, so after takeoff or before landing between an altitude of 5,000 to 15,000 feet, with air strikes rarely happening above 20,000 feet. So the majority of lighting strikes fortunately do not severely affect the aircraft these days as they are well protected. However, lightning is still very dangerous with over 2,000 people still dying every year. So one of the biggest challenges for airplanes is the increasing use of advanced materials like composites and two examples are the Airbus A350 and the Boeing 787 which are both made of carbon fiber reinforced polymer or CFRP with for over 50% of their structure and this material is only 1 1000 so as conductive as aluminum so that poses a big problem to lighting protection. So the effects of lighting on aircraft can really be categorized into two main different types which is direct and indirect effects. So direct effects is mainly physical damage to the aircraft so at the point where the lighting channel attaches you can get bending, melting, burning, pitting or vaporization of the structure or externally mounted components. There could also be thermal damage to the internal structure due to the conduction of a high amount of current which will cause a lot of heat to develop. And a lighting channel itself heats up instantaneously to thousands, tens of thousands of degrees, which uh, actually leads to a shockwave, which can also cause damage. And another main uh, concern really is the ignition of fuel vapors, which could cause potentially catastrophic fuel explosions. So indirect effects is mainly due to the electromagnetic field that's created due to the strike. So the varying current changes according to Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction will lead to induced currents in the aircraft structure and also in the systems of the aircraft if they are not protected carefully. So this can lead to transit voltages in the system and voltage surges. So the impact may be a flight display is going blank which has happened before or data signals being corrupted or causing any other kind of malfunction in the avionics. So the fuel system is one of the most significant concerns for lightning strike protection. Fuel systems are incredibly complicated. We have different tanks in different areas and a complex system of pipes, valves and pumps. And also the associated electrical system, for example, um, the fuel quantity indication system. So there have been a few incidents in the past where lightning has caused the ignition of fuel vapor inside the fuel tanks, which has led to crashes. But the most significant accident, which wasn't lighting related, was TWA-800, which brought about a lot of changes that affected lighting strike protection as well. So in 1996, a Boeing 747 crashed after takeoff due to an explosion in the central fuel tank, which was most likely caused by a short circuit in the fuel quantity indication system. So that led to sparking inside the tank, which ignited the fuel vapors and caused the failure of the structure. The sweeping changes were made subsequent to the investigation into this accident to reduce fuel tank flammability and eliminate potential ignition sources. So a big change was the introduction of fuel tank inerting systems which top up the fuel tanks with nitrogen enriched air to actually get the oxygen level uh, down to a lower level. So lighting is a major potential ignition source and that was looked at much more carefully subsequent to this accident as it only requires a small amount of energy to cause a spark, so a few millijoules could cause a spark that ignites fuel vapors, whereas a lightning strike injects an enormous amount of energy into the aircraft, up to 1 billion joules of energy. Another problem with wing fuel tanks is that they are an integral part of the wing structure. So for composite aircraft, if lightning was to attach to the upper surface, of the wing, there is a concern that it could lead to dangerous sparks forming inside the tank which could lead to ignition. Indirect effects are also concerns for fuel systems as the electrical systems are usually designed to carry low voltages into the tanks but induced currents due to um, lightning could cause malfunctions into the tank which could potentially lead to arcing or sparking. So how are aircraft protected against lightning? The main aim of lightning strike protection is to allow the energy of the lightning strike to pass through the aircraft 
without adversely affecting the structure or the aircraft systems. So the, there is a need really to reduce the current density, so how much current flows for a given cross-sectional area. And we need to provide a low resistance path to ground. So ground in this case is the aircraft itself. It acts as a reference point for all the current flow to and we need to provide a path to that. So high current densities can lead to thermal damage due to heating effect and it also increases the chance of arcing and sparking. So lightning usually enters and exits at an extremity of the aircraft as seen in this picture here where it's entering through the nose and leaving through the wingtip and the direct attachment points are usually where the most physical damage occurs. So aircraft is zoned according to uh, the probability of a lightning attachment and the areas where as the aircraft moves, the lightning channel will actually attach to different parts of the aircraft. This is the swept strokes. And there will be areas where the lightning is only um, conducted essentially. So the current goes through the internal structure of the aircraft. As for the example in the picture, the uh, current is conducted through the fuselage uh, and the wing to actually finally come out of the wing tips. So now onto the specific protection methods. So the aircraft fuselage itself will act as a Faraday cage, conducting the majority of the current on the outside of the fuselage and out to the other extremity. So conventional aircraft uh, have an aluminum skin, which conducts uh, very well. However, composite aircraft need to make use of a conductive material, for example, embedding a, an expanded metal foil into one of the first layers of the composite material. There could also be an interwoven metal wire mesh inside the composite thighs or the use of conductive paint as well. So on the right is an example of how lightning strike protection is restored for an ABS F350 following damage to the skin. So essentially the um, patch of copper foil is added again to the structure. So electrical bonding is also very important, making sure that there is a path always for uh, currents to follow, which prevents arcing and sparking. And one way to achieve that is the use of bonding jumpers. So in the example on the right, this is showing uh, different fuel pipes, which actually have connections which are non-conductive. And by adding a bonding jumper across that joint, it allows the current to flow and thus reduces the chances of uh, sparking or arcing, which could result from a difference in electric potential. So for indirect effects, wires are also shielded with metal braids, for example. So any current that is induced due to electromagnetic effects will be induced in the shielding mostly instead of the wire that is carrying the signal. So radomes are a particular concern as they are made of fiberglass or carbon fiber, for example as they house the weather radar so they need something that doesn't really impact the signal of the radar and there are something called the segmented diverter strips on the surface of the radome which really cause the lightning to travel across the surface of the radome rather than through the structure and then it travels on the surface and then to the rest of the aircraft structure so to the aluminum fuselage or to the expanded metal foil on the rest of the structure so next thing is surge protection devices and this serves to prevent uh, voltage surges that could damage avionics or actually lead to thermal damage which could uh, for example melt the insulation around wires which would increase the risk of sparking or arcing. Another thing is about structural joints and fasteners. They must be tightly designed to prevent sparks. So for example the fastener in this picture there would be a coating to actually fill up any gaps to prevent sparks and in case lighting attaches directly onto the fastener there could potentially be sparks on the other side so the other side is usually covered uh, with a cap or with a nut or with sealant usually all aircraft have to meet strict certification requirements in order to gain their airworthiness certificate and that includes a lot of rules which is set by the FAA and EASA specifically for lightning protection and the photo is an example of the Airbus A350 undergoing some of its lightning tests. So for the future lightning strike protection will have to keep evolving and climate change will mean that more lightning strikes will happen and they will be of higher intensities, the use of advanced materials is only going to increase. The airframe systems are becoming more complex, more electric, and 
There's also electrification, so fully electric or hybrid electric propulsion, as well as entirely new different aircraft concepts such as the vent wing or a wing or an airframe that moves, which are really totally new different areas which we don't know a lot about. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and next time you fly for a thunderstorm remember that aircraft are well protected and thank you for watching.